Welcome. It's the FIH Hockey Pro League show. And on today's show, we're discussing all the teams who have been in action over the past few days. Over in South Africa, we've seen the men's teams of France, India, Netherlands and host South Africa, while in Buenos Aires, Argentina men and women have played host to Belgium. Before we introduce the guests, though, there were 62 goals over the 10 matches, and we've picked out three of what we think are the best. So we'll have a quick look at those, at those before we meet the guests. Run down very, very well. Uh, Lockwood looked as though he could pick up the rebound, but it's brought away. This is a big opportunity for India. They've got a man in the circle in Shamshir. He's going to receive now, must score, does score! India 3 0 from defending the um, penalty corner one end to scoring at the other in a uh, matter of seconds. It's India 3, France 0. Now the high ball. Oh, that's brilliant. Gets the tomahawk and scores! That is a glorious goal. Chip Hudemarkers, Yurik Krohn in his 100th test match. Gorzolani, it's high, it's powerful, and it's in the right-hand side of the net. And that's for the Evoskos Gorzolani we know. Wow, three awesome goals showing the tremendous skill level uh, that these teams uh, these teams show in South Africa. Um, so it's time to introduce the guests. Um, and first of all, I'd like to introduce USA's Lauren Moyer, uh, six, uh, sorry, 88 caps for the USA, um, and bring you all her knowledge as the midfield dynamo from Team USA. So uh, hello, Lauren, how are you today? Hi, good, thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. Then we've got Roger Hoffman, 212 caps for the Netherlands, um, absolute icon of the game. Um, hi, Roger, how are you today? Hi, Sarah, doing great, thanks. Brilliant. And then we've got Cedric, uh, Cedric Souza, one of the most uh, renowned coaches um, in the world um, and also in his own right, Olympian and uh, goalkeeper for the Indian men's national team. So hi, Cedric. Hi, Sarah. Nice to be back. Fantastic to have you. And I'm joined by my co-host today, Marsha Cox. So hi, Marsha. How are you again? Hi, Sarah. I am very excited to be here today. Brilliant. Well, we've had a fantastic uh, few days of, of hockey action. As I said at the start, 61 goals over 10 matches. Um, Lauren, I'm going to come to you first, really. Um, you have been watching the Pro League. USA have yet to uh, make their mark on this competition. How excited are you ahead of uh, USA's entry into the league based on what you've seen so far? Yeah, I think everybody's putting up a good show so far. Um, for us, obviously, being in the Pro League is is an honor and something that um, we look forward to. So it's a great way for us to get games in. Um, and I think that based on what we've seen, yeah, we're we're really excited to get to get our uh, schedule started. Um, and to uh, obviously, our our goals have shifted a little bit. Um, so these big these games are are huge for us. So yeah, we're thrilled. Yeah, Lauren, you were talking about how your goals have shifted a little bit. Um, of course, we, we have to talk about the Pro League, so we won't spend too much time about that. But yeah. um, a few weeks ago, we were talking about uh, some of the success stories of the past uh, with USA. If you look at uh, the Olympics in 2012, and, and probably that was a disappointing tournament. And on the back end of that, in 2014, USA played for a bronze medal um for that third and fourth place in in the world cup in the hague um looking back at that and looking at what you guys now have as your new goals how important is the pro league in that rebuilding for for usa and knowing that yeah. you guys have done it before yeah it's vital i think it's vital to to get games in and, and to gain those experiences with with such a young group um and, you know, none of us, none of us have over a hundred caps. So it, it, it's crucial for even myself. Um, so yeah, just, just getting on the field and, and, you know, having the players that we need to have uh, get in matches like that and make those mistakes and, and create that learning environment in against the best um, is only going to help us. So. And do you guys sometimes look into some of those learnings from the past and uh, project that into the future? Or is it, like you said, it's a quite a young team, um, or are you guys kind of wanting to also um, pave your own way and make your own sort of history? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. You look at other teams, too, that have had a rebuilding success. I mean, you look at um, in Ireland that ended up winning the silver at the World Cup. You look at the Belgian men who over the last 10 years have really, really grown. So you try to look at maybe what worked for them and emulate it in your own way. Um, 
but yeah, you kind of have to pave your own path because the players are different. The coaching is different. The game is different. So um, yeah, you got to put your own spin on it, but definitely looking uh, for outside inspiration from there. And we can, can't wait to see USA back in action again because it's always an exciting uh, exciting time when they take to the pitch. But we'll have a look back at what's been happening for the last uh, last few days for us. Over in Pochestrum, um, the FIH Hockey Pro League newcomers, South Africa and France, have been cutting their teeth. Um, and they came up against India and Netherlands, which uh, I think that's quite a baptism of fire. Um, and then over in Buenos Aires, obviously, Belgian men and women uh, resumed their Pro League campaigns uh, with, the, uh, with Argentina. And this was... Argentina's first matches in the Pro League this season. Um, but I wondered, first of all, um, if we could have a look at India, um, because, Cedric, I'm going to come to you. Um, we've seen the best of India in the last few days, and we've probably seen the not-so-great of India in the last few days as well. So I wonder if you could just give us your your thoughts on, on, on the Indian team, the Indian men's team's performance. Well, I think from a, from a total perspective, they're a really great attacking team. What happens is when they don't execute what they create, that is the most important thing. They've created chances, they've broken into the circle umpteen times, but they haven't scored as much as they should have scored. And you look at the game against France when India lost 5-2, she had 12 pieces. And from a team which has got such depth in the penalty corners in terms of firing, didn't score. So the French really played the, def the defensive was the defense was immaculate and absolutely brilliant. And when you crack a team which is predominantly going to score from PCs and you're going to you know, run them down so well, you're putting pressure on the, on the people executing the penalty corner. And, and from that perspective, India fell flat in, in the match against France. But from, from the other aspect of India, she's got tremendous attacking skills. She can transfer the ball from defense to attack in a, in a trice. You look at the goal that was just shown on one of the highlights of the goals is the mm. ball being picked up from a penalty corner and played from the deep zone in the 23 into the opposite help side zone and a goal coming from there. So the transfer of play from defense into attack is brilliant. And from that perspective, I think India is on the right track, but she's got this is always a learning curve. Get better and stronger. You work on the, on the, on the, on the mistakes you've made and not conversion in non-conversions. And then you look at it, she came really strong against South Africa after losing to France. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was, it was a great comeback. And I mean, Harman Preet in particular was absolutely awesome with his penalty corners. But um, I was also impressed with, um, I think it's Jugraj as well, who was the a youngster who in the first match scored a hat-trick. Um, and, and the point you made, you know, this, this, um, this series of matches, we've had three hat-tricks from penalty corners, haven't we? Which is, uh, which is a great conversion rate when it's firing. I think the important thing for Jugraj is because he's so young and it's his first big international sortie, basically the most important thing for him is to how to handle pressure. He mm -hmm. scored three goals and then the, the pressure gets to you. I've got to score every time and I've got to get score every time. And so it's how you can maintain that balance in terms in when you're playing top class opposition is critical. So he has to be given a little bit of time. He has to grow into it and not put too much pressure on himself. But uh, from that aspect, India's got plenty of flickers. You've got Harman Preet, you've got Jugraj, and you've got Varun Kumar, all three scoring goals. So when they when Rupinder Pal left, we thought there was going to be a, a chink in the armor, but then you've got a youngster coming and take, takes on the mantle. We're heading over to Ash Roger, really, about the Dutch performance. Yeah. Because yeah. again, you know, we, we, we saw some, some good and some bad and some ugly going on there. So, Roger, what were your thoughts? Um... Yeah, uh, I agree, and I think the, the the good thing, and I think that that's what India is a bit the same is is um it's, it's such a new team, so many new players, and uh, um it's really really difficult to to get that constant high level. I think it's really important to to make sure you get that high level, uh, and and that's what they're doing. Um, and I'm 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 happy to see the Dutch team play like this. I, I think they play with a lot of energy, and they play as a team. Um, two of the things that maybe we're quite missing uh, um, the last period up to, uh, to Tokyo. So uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed by, uh, by the way uh, Jeroen May is, is doing it. And uh, I, I like to watch them because uh, I, I just feel the energy and I feel the team spirit watching the games. And, and in particular, I'm really happy that we can actually talk about so many games this time because, uh, um, you know, uh, it's, it's been a while since there, we've been playing so many games in, in, uh, in one row. So that's perfect. Yeah, and Rogier, you talk about the energy in the team. There's a lot of youngsters um, and a lot of faces that maybe aren't 
necessarily young by age, but definitely uh, inexperienced. One of the players, I think, whose story is also just fascinating, and then also to see him step up and take this opportunity with two hands is uh, Dennis uh, Varmadam. I don't know if you would like to share a little bit of his background, if you'd like me to, but his story I find is really interesting. And I think our, our listeners and viewers would really like to know a little bit more about him um, and his journey and also just about his performance at the moment. He's, he's really stepped it up and, and taken this opportunity. Yeah, he is. And, and uh, um, I, I know him uh, really well, actually. And I, I know that uh, uh, he would like me to say that he's one of the youngsters. He's doing really well. And one of the new guys in the team is doing well because... Uh, he's getting a lot of attention and sometimes uh, he, do he doesn't really like it. So uh, having said that, he, he's, an, he's an, an inspiration to a lot of people, I think. He, uh, uh, he was diagnosed with a uh, really severe kind of cancer uh, four years ago now, I think. And um, um, in, in, in a, he had a really, really tough time. Um, with the end, uh, the, the, actually the only solution was to amputate his arm. Uh, but, but, you know, at the last moment of, of uh, one doctor said, well, I, I can try uh, to, that you can keep your arm, but you will probably never play hockey again. And, uh, um, well, that's now four years ago. And now he's playing international matches for the Dutch team. And uh, um, he's in, in the way he is doing it with the energy he's giving the team, I, I completely agree. It's really an inspiration to a lot of people. Yeah, and without taking their foot, their foot off the gas, I read an article this morning. Um, the captain, Terry Brinkman, said that this is they, they're never going to take their, their foot off the pedal. That's sort of the energy that they're going for. And that's, I think, when we look at the games on the weekend, I think they were probably disappointed in their results against France. And we'll get to France in a bit because their performance was also really interesting um, this weekend. But just on, on that aspect of, of the Dutch, then their recovery after that French game was, was to, to punish the opposition again. Um, what do you think of, of this, is it this sort of new refreshing mentality that they have? Well, it was needed. Um, so uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't only, uh, it's, only, it's not only a good thing. I think it's also a necessary thing for the, for the Dutch men's team. Um, and, and I think uh, the team is doing that really well. The staff is doing that really well. And uh, um, I, I, think, I think Holland should never have a sort of a, a modus when they do it halfway because I don't think that's working. Um, it didn't work in the past, at least. And uh, I think they're doing it really well. And I really like the, 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 the energy with all the, 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 the new guys who really, really, really want to play. It doesn't matter which game it is. And it doesn't matter against who it is. And uh, I think they did... Oh, they did game. They did good coming back after the game against France. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think if you just look at the way the Dutch played, is the the brilliance and the the outletting and the way they build up. The build up is at at a at a pace which is incredible speed. And you know, and and the clinical, how clinical they are in the circle in the final third. They get their goals. They come into the circle and they get it. You know. So from an overall perspective, this young team is showing how they are molding together in terms of build-up and the clinical finishing in the circle. Yeah. And the build-up is coming, that, that, that's, that's, that's also really coming from the coach, from Juno May, right? Every training, they start 30, 30, 45 minutes of just passing the ball, just in between the two of them. Just pass the ball, pass the ball, pass the ball, just to get the, to get the, the level of the game up and a level of the passing up. And, and, um, and that, that's working for them. And well, I think that's, uh, that's a good thing. Yeah, talking of Jaron Delmay, I mean, he must be he must be doubly pleased to see both his Dutch team doing so well, but actually the French team playing very well as well, because it's going to be part of his legacy that they are performing as they are. Um, Lauren, I, I just wondered if we could come to you. Um, we saw France struggling in their first match um, against India. You know, they, they looked off the pace. They, they didn't. Well, they looked as if they were in a completely different um, time zone. As the active athlete on this panel of guests, can you just explain to the listeners and viewers how difficult is it to adjust? You know, you've, France had had a long journey out there. Um, they hadn't known they were going to be playing pro league hockey until very, very um, recently. How difficult is it to get the mindset and the body ready for that top class action? Yeah, and I think, you know, the pro league is, is a little bit... Um nerve wracking in general, but to be, to be the new kid on the block and then to come in and, and immediately be challenged like that, you know, that you don't have a second to, to breathe when, when you're going to go play against an India against a Holland. So, um, don't know if it first game jitters or yeah, maybe, maybe a bit of, of jet lag and, and the travel, but yeah, you got to shake it off and, and you know that, um, it's going to have to be your best game. So for them to then 
bounce back. Um, just shows that, they, you know, that they can do it. So maybe there was some rust or something, but yeah, uh, they belong in the pro league for sure. And they've uh, shown that it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just on that, you, you talk about taking your shaken off and, and learning. This is exactly what they did. We saw a definite uh, improvement in their performance from game one to game two, even. Um, yeah. Cedric and, and Rukia, what are, are your uh, takes on some of the exciting players like uh, Timothy uh, Clement and then also Victor Lockwood and how important they are for, for the French team. And not forgetting, though, that with this balance of the exciting new players, they've still got their Victor Chalet in the back, holding the fort and, and directing sort of the, the game. Um, really interested to hear your guys' thoughts on, on this French team and these really key players. Well, I think you know if you look at them in the first game, uh, the main the main issue with them was the fact lack of lack of match play. That's the key issue at this level. It takes a few games to get into the rhythm of things, and you don't you don't get a baptism of fire. We play France against India, you know that's the kind of thing. So the the important thing is they learn from the first debacle in terms of what they did. They were not aggressive on the on on the ball. They were not uh, they were not coming. They were committing early and leaving the gaps behind. So. They learned from that and they came out really strong in the second game where they, they, they closed the gaps and they played a brilliant match. So from that aspect, you know, you need, you need game changers in every team, okay? And those who can, uh, can counter the thrust of the opposite team or, or make a balance within the squad itself. And if you look at it, the French are slowly getting into the kind of pattern of play which they have trying to structure. And it's great to see a team, you know, because when you play in the second league, not in the top league, you are not playing the same level. So you can take those chances. Whereas here, it's all a question of being effective and it's a question of percentages. And the French are working really hard because of, of the, the Olympics coming up and the World Cup, of course. And their penalty I think, corner I think, as well. I think, they're doing, I think they're doing it really well. And uh, um, one of the things, of course, is also is... is Normally you can work, um, you work, you can work towards the tournament, and then you you know that during that tournament you have to, you have to be in the top of your game. And, and playing in pro league is, is a bit different, right? You have to, you know, at once you have to play a really important big game against a good opponent, and that is that's more difficult than playing in tournament. You see that I think with South Africa is a bit the same. In the beginning, you know, it's, it's the level that, that they can reach in, in the Olympics was amazing, and now you see, hey, that it's more more difficult to do it one game at a time instead of building sort of a a tournament atmosphere and, uh, and and that's new in the pro league right for france the same so i think that's one of the things as well they have to you know get used to it and it, they're doing it great and i think it's 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 amazing that towards the the olympic games in paris uh they're getting they're reaching this level because i think it's uh it's good that hockey is doing well in the home country as well yeah it, it, was, it was really obvious wasn't it in the in the game yesterday uh that france had i mean fatigue had set in absolutely dreadfully in the final couple of quarters against the Netherlands. But I was just going to, again, come, come back to Lauren. I mean, Pro League is so different to tournament hockey, isn't it? Because it's literally, you're, you're getting ready for a couple of games, then you have that break, but that time to, to learn from the experience before you move on. It's, is, it, is it making you different as players? Do you think, is it, is it giving you sort of different skill sets that you perhaps hadn't developed before? Well, I think especially for us in a country that doesn't have a club system, it's really the only way that we are able to learn you're put against the best and you're put in these positions where you know a lot of these games for us are well every single game for us is, is hard you mm -hmm. have to be prepared mentally physically emotionally for those and then when you go in um there's a lot of learning that that's done after every single one of those um so for us it's it's like i said earlier it's a privilege to be in it because you're you're exposed to that high level um at every single match that you play throughout so yeah yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm and just going to be back. Sorry, I was going to come back to you, Marsha, and just, you know, although you're the co-host, I'm going to ask you to take a, um, a completely biased opinion now. South Africa, I mean, obviously they, they came into the competition, um, again, like France, it's their first time in Pro League. We definitely saw learnings taking place, even though the scores weren't flattering. We definitely saw a, a, a learning scenario taking place in that South African squad. Yeah, I think that's, this is exactly what I was going to add on to what Lauren was saying about taking the learnings from, from each game and applying it to the next. I think that's probably the biggest difference that we saw this past weekend between France and South Africa was that France were able to apply those learnings directly into the, the following game, where South Africa, you know, the execution of, 
of what you had learned and, and what changes you're going to need to make were still slightly uh, short. You saw them make the same unforced errors uh, in every single game. Um, something as simple like uh, at the pushback when they've conceded a goal, uh, giving the ball back to the opposition within five passes. The, these are some of the things that, that um, yeah, are also a compliment to the opposition for putting that much pressure, you know, straight after scoring a goal. But at the same time, these are sort of the, the basics that you want to fix uh, game after game. And I think uh, South African men probably still have a little bit more, a little further to go. Um, whereas for, for France, they could turn it around really quickly. Mind you, I must say that the South African men are missing a lot of their experienced players. So this is a very young group. A lot of them, yes, you would have seen them at the Olympics, but bear in mind the Olympics was their first major tournament for, for mm. some of these, these players. So it is still an inexperienced team in the sense of how much international exposure they've had. It is also an, a challenge that South Africa has had for many years is developing the depth and the pro league has only given the opportunity to do this. And I know that all of these players, as much as they might be devastated by the goal line, you can see um, some individual improvements uh, from game to game. You can see that they were able to put more pressure on the ball carrier if you compare their first game um, against the Dutch and then they improve it. And of course, they'll be disappointed with the score line and should hopefully in the coming games reward themselves a little bit more. Um, but, and as Cedric says, shut the back door. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think we, we shouldn't we shouldn't write them off too soon and and almost see have um, high expectations based on their Olympic performance. We also need to put it into perspective that this is a country that's come a long way. And what they showed at the Olympics is only poten their potential of what they're capable of doing. But there's still a lot of hard work that needs to go into it. And they don't have the consistency um, in their preparation that mm. the other countries have. And hopefully now with the Pro League, they can introduce that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's fascinating. And we could stay talking about the matches um, in South Africa all day, but we uh, we need to move across to Argentina now. But before we do that, um, we've, we've got some, we've got three of the top saves. I mean, it was a weekend where goalkeepers were brought into action, you know, on, on a highly regular basis. We've, we've picked three of the top saves now. So we'll take a look at those. And the ball left-hand side for Belengi, and it is... That's a great save from Belen Suchi. It wasn't right in the corner, but she had to get the ball clear and she did so. Michael, what a save. Say what a save it was. Bellano, what a save again. And Doran keeping Belgium in this. Well, the first one was the line man somehow touched that onto the post. A long corner, quickly taken now. France are scrambling in defence. Let me check into the uh, circle. Shot in the save from Thierry. Brilliant. Yeah, great bit of work. Quick shot away at goal. Fantastic defending by Thierry on his left hand side. Great save. Well, that was just three saves from a, um, a few days of absolute brilliance by goalkeepers. Um, Lauren, I've just got to ask you have you ever scored past Balance Sushi? Have I? Yeah. Yeah, you have. Yeah. On, on the back post, though. <laughs> <laughs> she, I mean, she, she's quite remarkable, isn't she? She still keeps performing time and time again. And as we see every single time she takes to the pitch, the, the levels of, of motivation to, to win are absolutely awesome. Um, Marsha, hand over to you. A bit of a chat about Argentina men, I think. Yeah, I think it was um, consistent performances from them. But, um, of course, Belgium with their strength. Um, I found I found the results really interesting considering what we've seen in the, the first few games. I think Argentina and Belgium were really nice to see some really close, strong battles um, on both occasions. Um, Rukhia and, and Cedric, because we're talking men's hockey, but it would also be nice to maybe open up a little bit of an open discussion um, on your guys' thoughts on the Argentina men and what do you think this as their start of the of the year how has that gone well you know we know what the argentine men play the game is normally to hook up enough pressure and play on the counters look for the long balls in the deep zones and then use the 3d skills and try and penetrate for the 3d skills and get a penalty corner 
or a Charlotte goal. They're really dangerous in the last quarter and they have this long transfer from the defense into the deep zones. So if you can counter that, Argentina is actually having a lot of trouble then. But from the Belgium team, we know that they are a brilliant team. They can start from, from the deep zone and, and move up like the Dutch, very much so. The build-up is really strong. The connections between lines is fantastic. The, the, the communication between players, knowing to play the ball in the right spaces, the leadings are all actually uh, top class. So from, from the first game, you look at them, uh, when they played against the, uh, the Argentine men, uh, Argentina actually just soaked up the pressure and then got that second goal with the, the penalty stroke in the end, which was actually, for me, a blinder of a stroke hitting both posts and then coming in. It's impossible for any keeper in the world to even to say, okay, it's gone in, that's it, you know, kind of stuff. <laughs> but from, a, from an aspect of the second match, um, uh, I think the first match, they hurried it too much, trying to play the long balls, the, Dutch, uh, the sorry, the, the Belgian team. And then the second match, they controlled play a little bit more. They kept the ball, passed the ball, moved the defense, and then they got their two penalty corner goals from uh, Hendricks and Leipart. But from a, well, eight penalty corners in a row, and, and for Belgium to get just one out of them, eh? it doesn't show, it doesn't speak well for a team of that, of that stature. Or is it um, the goalkeeper in you that's just really happy that, <laughs> <laughs> that the penalty corner defense is doing their job well <laughs> from Argentina? <laughs> but you know, the Argentine ladies team also were fantastic. Also, so if you want to talk about that or we talk later, what should we do? We'll, we'll, we'll move on to the women in a minute. Let's see what Roger right. thinks about these guys. Sorry, uh, I think I think it's a uh, um, well, Argentina play, uh, playing at home is always a bit. I thought it was always a bit different than uh, uh, than playing away. You know, they I haven't been to Argentina that many times, but the games is that I've played there against Argentina is always it's always a nice crowd. It's it's always a really difficult game. It's uh, because the, you know they they want to they want to show how good they are when they play at home. And I think uh, uh, looking at the fact that they won against Belgium once and the other game was also quite close. I think they did a great job. Um, and it, it, for them, it's. Uh, Probably one of the first games, uh, serious games after the Olympics, and uh, I think uh, I think they did great. And I think you can see, I think in, a bit in Belgium, and uh, I don't want to, I don't want to make it too big. Definitely not. But uh, uh, also the, the games against uh, in Holland in the well, just after the Olympics, right? The first early games. They are the team to beat now, and everybody wants to beat them. And uh, uh, and and that means that they are they are the bar, and uh, every every other team is uh, is, is trying to get there. And uh, that, that's going to be uh, challenging for Belgium, I guess. Yeah, and you talk about playing in, a, in the Argentinian crowd. We know that for the women's hockey, they, it, it's just as big or even bigger probably than, than the men. Um, so, Lauren, you've had plenty of experience, I'm sure, in playing um, Argentina on Argentinian soil. Don't you think the Belgium women actually put out a really great performance, considering that as well, that they're not just playing Argentina, they're playing Argentina plus a crowd? Yeah, the crowds are always really, really excited. Um, so it does create an awesome environment as a hockey player, even even if you're uh, the enemy. Uh, it's, it's, it's a cool environment to play in. But yeah, I thought the Belgian women looked fantastic. I mean, holding on a lead um, well into that third quarter. Um, you know that it's going to be that full 60 minutes, though, especially, um, you know, Argentina, they're exceptionally talented and they would have used that um, crowd as, as an extra motivator. But yeah, I thought... Belgium, Belgium has looked great for, for a couple of years now. Um, and every time that we play them, we know that it's going to be exceptionally tough. So I think that you talk about building, they've, they're on an upward trajectory for sure and shouldn't be overlooked. So I, th I think the thing about the Belgian team is that, yes, they play brilliantly. The, the thing they seem to be lacking, and, and probably Cedric, the coach on the call here, can make, make a comment on this. They seem to be lacking the ability to close out a game. And because we saw that against Argentina, as you say, Lauren, they had the lead, they'd lead for a long time. Um, but they couldn't hold on to it. So, Cedric, what are your thoughts on that? I think their the, the whole structure is a very strong defence first. They're, they've played a fantastic defensive play right through both the matches. And if they make an uncharacteristic mistake, which led to the second goal, you know, we never expect them to make that kind of a mistake from a Belgian team, which mm -hmm. is so structured in the way they've played. Then they kind of, the wind gets out of the sails and then, you know, that, and that kind of stuff. So from a, the, the, the opportunities that they create are not many. So it's more a defensive play uh, against, against the Argentine. I'm talking about just that team or that game. 
but they are creative if you look at them in in the past games in not only in the pro league but in the past they are creative the question of closing out games is also a question of your mental state of mind and how you can believe that you can win from a winning position okay from your, from that's the key issue and it only comes with winning success beats success so it's a question of giving it a bit of time yeah absolutely um we're actually going to have to wrap it up here but i've just got one last um, question for for lauren um as, as she again will be the person experiencing this we've watched argentina um we've watched um agustina gozolani one of this uh, one of this show's podcast guests uh, score a hat trick we also watched uh juliette jancunas um albertario granata just you know a line of attack after line of attack how awesome potentially could Argentina be with this new this new group of players? Yeah, uh, really deadly. I think they've got so many different scoring op- options um, and you've got girls that want to want to be the ones on the ball. Um, so but they're also uh, they share the ball at the same time. You know, they make that extra pass. Um, so, yeah, they're, of course, always historically good. Um, but I think even now, so they've got some some more threats and those girls that were, um, you know, I was playing against in, in the juniors and now they just keep getting more and more experience and more confidence um, as they have more success. So, yeah, always, always got to watch out for them. Absolutely. Well, we, it's, as I say, it's time for us to wrap up the uh, wrap up the show. And it's actually whizzed past today because there's just so much to talk about. Just a quick reminder of where all these matches lead the various teams who've been playing. Um, Argentina women have two wins from two, which moves them to third in the league. Um, they have their next set of matches against England. Belgium have slipped uh, down to fourth. Um, obviously, Lauren, you say are going to wait for a month and then you're taking on Germany. We'll see you piling up that league, which will be great. In the men's league, Netherlands extend their league. Belgium remain in second, India are in third, and France will, I think, be pleasantly surprised to find themselves in fifth, one point ahead of Argentina at the moment, and South Africa in ninth, with some tough matches coming up against France and Germany in the coming days. Um, We'll be back with the show on the 21st of February as we wrap up all the action from South Africa, um, and we're looking forward as the Pro League action moves towards India. But we're going to finish up with a moment of the week, and I think um, this was a really heartening moment. It was when... Sorry again, Cedric. It's when France beat India in their second um, Pro League match. Cholet scores! That is brilliant from Victor Cholet. And that should be the match for France. What a fantastic finish there by the big man. Let's go. Let's go for 10. Here's another chance for France. It's in the net. France have done it. There's no question about it now. Goyer with the ball in. Then swept from Clément. And for the first time in their history, France have beaten India. Five goals to two. Fabulous. Well, thank you again, everybody. Thanks to Cedric. Thanks to Lauren, Roger, and to the co-host, Marsha Cox. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, guys. Bye. Check it out.